What is up? What is up, everybody? Tis I, Photo Dave. This is Toy Picks. Now, just as I start all the others, we're going to start this out just talking to the replay crew before the crew comes in. Here's the question for the night. What are your favorite action figures to take photos of? And vehicles. What do you got on the vehicle side that you really dig? And I know there's like three questions here. You can do an either or kind of answer in the comments. I'm good with that. But the last one here is, are there figures that on their own, you're not so sure about shooting, but when you put them in a larger group, it just takes them up a notch. What are those figures? I'll tell you right now, when it comes to that third part, those figures for me are any version of these guys, any version of the turtles. I feel like it's a better shot when I can throw all four in there. Although it's also nice to show off their individual personalities. Sometimes you have really good figures of the turtles like these NECA ones. Sometimes maybe the figures aren't so good. So maybe it has to do with when you have figures that you don't enjoy as much, but you're a hardcore Turtles fan, so you have a bunch of Turtles figures. Maybe if you don't like the individual figures as much as maybe, say, some of the nicer individual figures, maybe at that point you take them and decide, okay, for these ones that I don't dig as much, i got to shoot them in a group because that just makes them that much cooler. But I don't know. I'm making things up as I go along. But for me, the turtles on their own, very cool. These NECA ones, very cool. But putting them in a group, ooh, I'm a big fan of doing things like that. Now, as far as vehicles are concerned, I don't have any but the Hiss tank. So I have to say, though, about the Hiss tank, it lights up so well, like the lights that it uses are so good, you can use them as light sources for photography. And I don't know if there's any other vehicles out there that do that. If they do, let me know in the comments because, or in the chat, now that people are starting to show up. So yeah, I think that it gets kind of an extra point for me because it can do that. Also, I've never been the guy that likes the light up and sound features, but putting that Cobra logo on the ground with the Hiss tank, I think that's good stuff. So right away, I've answered two questions, but I've also got a whole lot of, I guess, favorite figures that I really enjoy shooting. And really, is that even technically possible? Shouldn't we all just have one favorite? But no, no, because there's really a lot here. So, let's see what Harry's got to say. What's going on, Harry? Nameless soldiers are great as a threat or punching bag. That's true. Putting together a bunch of army builders, like one of those shots, woo that's one of the reasons that I'm really looking forward to going out there and picking up some of those Valiverse Urban Commandos because they've got all the hands, they've got all the accessories, all the extra options, the different faces. All that stuff, ooh, I'm going to be getting some of those. Those things make me very happy, very excited indeed. Wreck ship! Evening, sir. Thank you very much for stopping by. So, for you, wreck ship, here's what we've got. It's favorite vehicle to shoot, favorite individual figure to shoot, and are there figures that you think go better in a group than on their own individually? On their own, they're fine. But when you put them in a group, they're ridiculously cool. And yeah, for sure, army builders qualify. And I tend to think the TMNT line, I think that the four turtles kind of qualify that way as well. Unless you've got really sweet ones, like the Universal Monsters TMNT figures. Those don't necessarily need to be in a group of four. Those are just purdy figures. Not very articulated, but they still work. I still like it. All right. The most photogenic vehicle I have at the moment is probably that Fortnite tactical boat that was going on clearance last year. That thing, I was tempted multiple times by that, especially because it was going on clearance. And now all the requests are making sense. You want to use that boat in some photos, don't you? All right. 
I'll get working on a doc or something here shortly so you can, because that'd be that'd be super cool, especially with the Joe shots that you keep taking. That'd be a lot of fun. <clears throat> now. Hitty, hitty. I have a couple of Bratz cars that light up. The red convertible is awesome. Okay, here's my question on the Bratz car. It always, to me, looks like it's just a little big for 112 scale figures. Am I wrong? Because it does look like it would be a fun, like just a chill car. You know who'd be perfect in that thing, I think, is probably the classified Chuckles. Like if anybody has the classified Chuckles, it just looks like the kind of thing he just drive around in just to kind of look like a cool guy. Because I always imagine that's his cover. His cover is actually, hey, he's just that guy out there getting a lot of attention. Because who would assume that somebody that works intelligence is really out there trying to draw a whole lot of attention to themselves? He, in fact, should be wearing one of those CIA shirts just to make people laugh when he actually is CIA. Oh, great. Googly moogly. I'm talking mucho mas. Right, Harry, ninjas are the universal army builders of choice. Ninjas are really sweet. But I have to say, for me, I like the soldiers more because I feel like I can do more with soldiers. On the other hand, I mean, ninjas work with turtles. They work with Batman. They would work with Daredevil when that Mafex comes out. Yeah, ninjas do work for quite a few. But so do a lot of these soldiers, too, like the Urban Commando that I was just talking about. But yeah, ninjas ninjas can definitely get it done. No doubt about that. That might be why I start loading up on some Night Creepers. Or why I might get some Spec Ops Troopers and make them look like ninjas. Those things. Like I got the female Spec Ops Trooper from Valibers. She's really cool. And I gave her a sword once. She looks like she's basically wearing a ninja outfit. Her holding a sword is pretty awesome. See, the blue and red ninjas from Classified Series work very well in a group. I bet I had some of the red ninjas, so I did enjoy putting those together in a group. I think I only had, I might have gotten as many as four, but I know I had two. Because I had them working with that first Storm Shadow that makes me shiver because I actually bought it. So, yeah, the one, not the one that is like the V1 appearance, but the one that was Ninja Force, that one, it just didn't have the articulation that the others did. If it had, then I would have been fine with it. Harry, it's a little off scale. Let's see, but not too bad. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Because, yeah, I do keep seeing, I've seen I've seen laser fans talk about that Bratz convertible enough where you get curious and you see enough pictures and you're just going, man, I kind of wonder because Barbie seems oversized for some of her vehicles. Sometimes I think, I wonder if we could get maybe Chuckles driving a pink Corvette. But even though Barbie's a little oversized for some of her vehicles, I have a feeling that the vehicles themselves are quite a bit oversized for classified. Wreck ship. And you know the classified series grump with the alternative steel brigade head while not coming with extra hands. Good man. You know me all too well. Let's see. It still looks great in a group as well. That's true. That's true. I want, I want classified to start making extra hands standard so badly. Because one of the reasons that I'm really looking a lot at the urban commandos is because of the extra hands. Like when we're talking army builders, the classified puts together, then it pretty much works. They've got almost as many options as a lot of the Valiverse ones do. They just miss extra hands. So all you can do is like when you've got a figure punching one of the army builders, they're, they're the army builders falling back, but they've just got their trigger hands. So they're like, ah, or something. So just from a photogenic photography perspective. Seriously, this is what I talk about all the time and I couldn't get photogenic out of my mouth. From that perspective, I like the extra hand. So if Classified starts doing it with a lot more of their army builders, I'll be stoked. I know they're doing it with a Night Creeper, which is why I'm really stoked about that one. Speaking of ninjas being pretty awesome.
buttons. Harry, I got the Floosh Icons Ninjas figures when they were really cheap, and I've heard that those are really good, Harry. What do you think of it? Curious there. Wow. The live stream is looking pretty, uh, pretty grainy tonight, I think. Does it look pretty grainy on your guys' end, just out of curiosity? What I might do is just turn up the lights, because it might be that ISO is messing with it a little bit. Mr. Matson, evening, sir. Thanks for stopping by. We're just talking about what everybody's favorite vehicles and figures are to shoot, and the extra credit kind of question is what figures do we have that maybe aren't so much fun to shoot one at a time, but maybe if you put them in a group, they're awesome. And so far, like I was talking about the turtles, if you put those in a the group, they're really cool, even though a lot of them are really cool on their own too. But then we've been talking a lot about various army builders. So ninjas have made it in. I've been talking about the urban commando. Wreck ship brought up grunt. So you can just pop that steel core head on them. See, maybe a tad bit grainy, but only with full screen. Okay. <laughs> maybe maybe I should just shrink it and give us a blank kind of blank kind of thing here. Tell you what, guys, the light is right there like it is. It is four feet in front of me, but I have to walk around my desk. So give me just a sec. Let me see if turning that up takes care of it. It should, but who really knows? All right. Definitely looks less grainy on my end, so it had to be that they were making up or the computer was making up for the ISO or because it was dark. It was just getting grainy like that. Ah, uh, all right. Almost missed a bunch there. Mr. Manson, my favorite vehicle to shoot might be the Bratz car. See, that's the second time the Bratz car has come up too. I also love the snake armors I got. The Hiss tank is fun, but so large. That's true. That's true. If you're going to bust out the Hiss tank, you've got to basically make a lot of room for it. And my table, my drawing table that I used to take all my pictures on, I think it's maybe 40 inches long. So no matter what I do, I'm not going to get a great depth of field for the Hiss tank. So yeah, we'll see. I mean, that's a good call. I do enjoy the lights. Like <laughs> I would bust out the Hiss tank to just use as a light source. But the Bratz car, the snake armors, did you get, somebody was making snake armors for classified, right? Or are you talking the ones in the three and three quarter scale? Or I suppose one eighteenth scale. Wreck ship. Granted, we only have a handful at the moment, but once we get Torch and Naga hide, we will have a nice set of dreadnoughts to do group photos together. That's a good call. And that handful, you're right, like it's growing pretty quick. And Lenny keeps talking about how he's really stoked about Road Pig. You know Road Pig's coming down the pipe. And then you got to get, I was trying to come up with all the dreadnoughts. So help me out if I miss anybody. Obviously, we need Xandar, but I think he got announced. Uh, let's see. There is also, oh, what's his name on the skiff? Zanzibar. There's Thrasher. There's Monkey Wrench. Road Pig and Xandar. Who else we got? And Zanya, right? I think she is Zartan's daughter. But yeah, I mean, there's still plenty of dreadnoughts for him to do. So let me know what I missed if I did. Harry, they are small, but you can make it work. Okay. All right. Game on. Let's see. Just going back to see, okay, the ninjas. Sorry, Harry. I was trying to remember what we were talking about there. But, yeah, the floosh ninjas. I've seen that they seem to be more true 1-6 scale, where a lot of stuff Hasbro's doing really isn't quite like that. It's a little bigger. I have a bunch of troop builders. Ninja, Cobra Soldiers, Vipers, Horde Swarm from Vala. The Swarm. Oh, man. You got a bunch of Horde, too? Horde, Horde might be the next. I don't know that that'll be next. It might be Urban Trooper or Urban Commandos just because I want a few of them. But that Horde Trooper, I'm, that Swarm, I need to get. Jericho Savage, thanks for stopping by, man. His tank is perfect for outdoor photography. See, man, I need to do more of that. 
Hopefully when the spring comes in a little better, maybe I'll get outside for that. Even though, even so, I live in a pretty busy apartment complex, so I'd have people always constantly trying to figure out what the heck, what's the weirdo doing over there with his toy? Mr. Madsen, I got Maester Chief's 112 snake armor. He used magnets for the legs, arms, and the two halves. It works so awesome, and you don't have to fear break, breaking the 3D printed stuff. That is a bonus. I did get a 3D print set for Roadblock way back when, the one to make him look more like his version one appearance, and the tripod snapped. And, of course, it wasn't me, but it still snapped, and I do prefer plastic because of that, I think. Yeah. Huh. All right. I will look at that, because I think Robo was talking about some snake armor that somebody sent him. It might have been Master Chefs or Master Chiefs. Or whatever. I who knows? All right, let's see. Zanzibar. Oh, burnout. I totally forgot about Storm Rider. I don't remember Storm Rider. Thrasher, Monkey Wrench, Sonya are the ones I can think of for the rest of the dread dreadnoughts. Okay. I don't remember Storm Rider at all. We might have to look him up here in a little bit. See, Zanzibar, Thrasher, Monkey Wrench, Burnout, Storm Raiders, and okay, okay, got it, got it, got it. Whew. Harry, what we got? Get a dog to walk, gets you out to look at places to shoot outside. See, I'm not I'm not worried about that. I can just walk around and I'll figure out spots to shoot. It's when you're in the apartment complex and you're taking stuff down to like buy because there are a bunch of trees here in one section and a little dirt path that would be really cool, but people use it quite a bit. So I have to I have to be maybe very, very sneaky, sir. Maybe not uh maybe not like maybe what I should do because I work from home, do it around lunch. Maybe not a lot of people will be there, maybe like around 10 in the morning or something. I don't know. That might work for me. That might it won't work in more five. Wreck ship storm rider came with a motorcycle during the pursuit of Cobra years. Okay, okay. I got it. Yeah, we're gonna have to look up storm rider just so I can make sure. All right, Mister Matson. Storm rider came with a motorcycle. He was twenty fifth era. Had a scarf covering his face and the mo. All right, all right. We're gonna go find storm. What's his face? Storm rider. Let's see here. New window. Yeah, Joe Stone right there. Aha. All right, I got this. Look at this. I'm actually kind of sharing screen and stuff. Well, I can't prove it yet, but I do know what I'm doing right now. Ish. Here we go. Oh, yeah. All right. Ah, there it is. Let's see if it'll... Dope. It would take me to another window. Well, anyway. All right. We found Storm Rider. <laughs> that is pretty sweet. Wreck ship. And if Lenny is running out of ideas, there was that convention set that had a bunch of the dread <laughs> dreadheads. Huh. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Lenny's running out of ideas, man. I think I think we're in really good hands with what Lenny's got going on. He just seems to get the lore. He seems to get a whole lot of it. And he's adding just the right amount without taking away from what came before. It's kind of how I wish other <laughs> honestly, it's kind of how I wish Disney would do things. <laughs> you know, add to, don't remove, don't uh don't make things bad. Although, although I have to say, when it comes to Disney, and this is just me speaking because I can, I suppose, when it comes to Disney, I would almost prefer they just left the legacy characters alone. Because <laughs> they hurt the legacy characters. Mando, awesome. Legacy characters, ooh, they've uh they've hurt them a little bit. Makes me sad. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this window here. Oops, <laughs> almost closed out Chrome. That would be that would be the wrong thing to do. All right. 
Mr. McDysentery. I like the cut of your jib, mister. Why, thank you, sir. I appreciate it very much. All right. Now, let's get into individual figures, guys. What do you think are some of your favorites? <laughs> Don't worry. I saw. I saw things. I knew cut of your jib. It's very important to understand the cut of your jib. Anyway. Yeah, what are some individual figures that you really enjoy shooting? Like, when I was looking back at a lot of the stuff that I've been shooting lately, obviously I didn't have much as far as TMNT last year, so I really got used to shooting these guys on Tuesdays. But, uh, yeah, man, I think that they've become, because, I really, because I've been shooting basically these guys most Tuesdays, I've really kind of learned how to move them to make them look right. And I don't think NECA could have done much else as far as articulation, except make it so the shoulders move higher. Like, that's as high as we can get the shoulders to move. So if they had just done that, we'd be set. Because when I think about it, the rest of it, it is covered in a shell. You're not going to get a whole lot of movement at the waist, so to speak. But yeah, the turtles are some of my favorites to shoot, even on an individual basis, for sure. Spaded one. Movie Raff with coat and hat. Yep, yep, very nice. That is a very cool figure, too. I keep, I keep kind of wanting to avoid those because I know that's a slope that's going to get me hosed. Let's see, nothing comes close, really. Why you got to do that? Because just as I'm sitting here thinking, I've been looking at him, but I'm trying to avoid him, you throw out, yeah, he's basically the best figure ever to photograph, and now I'm sad. See what you've done? I'm, I'm sad now. Maybe I'll have to look at it a little bit. My problem is, just like all of you, I know the potential rabbit hole. Jericho Savage, April can't get here any sooner. Need those retro card backs like now. Ooh. Which ones are we talking? Oh, we're talking classified, aren't we? Now, do you want them for the card backs or do you want them for the figures? Because I'll be honest, I want that Scarlet so badly. I feel like I need that Duke because eh, it's Duke, but he comes with extra hands. But I really want that Scarlet. I think she's going to be... When we're talking about figures that are, like last year I did a top 10 above 50 and a top 10 below 50, or I'm sorry, a top 5 above 50. I didn't get a lot last year, but a top 10 below 50, I put Scarlet, or I think I would put Scarlet in that top 10 below $50 range already, just because she looks like she's going to be near perfect, depending on how well they work that abdominal, like the waist range there. See, the coat and hat kind of automatically paint a scene. Oh, Raphael with a coat and hat, huh? And it had to be movie. It couldn't be in a line that I already am interested in. Ugh. Jericho, by the way, Raph is the best turtle. Okay, now hang on, hang on. I know we all have our opinions, and we all respect each other's opinions, but come on, come on. That's your guy right there. Look, I'll even accept. We'll give him the Raph bandana color. I'm fine with that. But there's no one out there more fun than Mikey. And to be honest, as I've gotten older, I'm like, ah, I've had to be the leader. I've had to be the tough guy. I've had to be the tech support. That's the scariest role I've ever had to play. So you're almost, I'm almost to a point where like, Mikey is aspirational. Like, so I can just go back to being the same goofy guy I always used to be. That's that's where the fun was for me. But yeah, Mikey, Mikey was my favorite when I was a kid, and it never changed somehow. Mr. Matson. Veteran William, Moon Knight, any version, any Hush Mafex figure, Warpath Eclipse, my custom Snake Eyes, so many great ones. Yeah, and you named a few here that I've got. Like, I brought, before I started this live stream, I took a picture and posted of my Mafex Wolverine here, the brown suit. This is one of my absolute favorite figures. 
But just as you're saying, basically any Hush Mafex figure, I'm uh, any Hush Mafex figure is absolutely correct. Like Hush takes it to a whole new level. But there are figures in their Marvel line too that I'm like, yeah. Basically, if it says Mafex and it's not Thor or Jean Grey, I'm good with shooting it. I would shoot Mafex every day, which is why I need to have certain days where. I don't have that option, like Turtle Tuesday, for instance. But yeah, you've got that going, Warpath Eclipse. I have her here, and I don't know if it's the newness or not. Again, thank you, sir. But uh, I've had a lot of fun shooting her already. Like, she is, I just love, I love the camo going on on her eyes, like around her eyes. I love the yelling face. I love the darker colors. Like, she's going to be a figure that will blend seamlessly with my Urban Commandos whenever I get those. And then, hopefully, the Gray Vanguard, and suddenly we just have just this crazy little squad. And just to add to that, I'm not sure I've even changed her pose since I showed you guys last time. Ah, know what? She's going to sit there. But this kill switch, for those same reasons, just the yelling head, once I got that pack, Oh, man, like any of these with these extra gear packs, uh, they're hard to beat. They are hard to beat for really photogenic figures. So, yeah, I'm with you. And you brought in Snake Eyes. This is not a custom Snake Eyes, but let's be honest, any figure dressed in black is kind of a cheat code for really cool photography. So, yeah, man, like uh, we have we have a lot of the same type of taste here. I need, I still want to get that Moon Knight. I'm not sure about, about Veteran William, even though basically the whole world says that's a cool figure. There's just things that I want to focus on. All right, what have we here? Mr. Savage, for both. <laughs> for both, let's see here. Ah, oh, Raph. That's Turtle. Ah, jeez. Rick Ship, I'm not going to lie. I'm having a hard time picking which of my classified figures is my favorite to shoot. I know there's a few that I don't enjoy that much. You know what I really discovered with my classified? And this is going to sound crazy to a lot of people, and I get it, but you can probably guess. I just stopped shooting the ones that I didn't have a lot of options for. So, like... I have Serpentor. I don't ever shoot Serpentor because there's nothing I can do except have him constantly holding things. I have Mindbender. I've never shot Mindbender. I've at least taken a shot or two of Serpentor, but never like a really creative one. It's always been in the light box. So that's me, man. But I will say one of my favorites, just because of all the hands, is Sarge here. Comes with tons of hands. I'm totally good with that. Comes with a weapon. You can kind of give him, even though it's kind of a cheat, when you take the hat off and the glasses off, it's kind of like having a second head. So Sarge is definitely a favorite. That's right. I sort of prepared for this one. So which ones don't you enjoy, Rex Ship? Let's hear some of that. Mr. Matt said, no, nah, he's right. Raph is the best turtle. <laughs> I hate you all. <laughs> Not cool, man. Not cool. I could go Dr. Cox on that. Hate is so overused. I have to come up with another word to use instead of it. I make a loathe you all. Anybody who dug scrubs, they know what's going on there. Spaded one. The TMNT Universal Monsters line is also super photogenic and are easy to theme around. Yeah, man. I love those. I've got those off to the side here. Little, well, let's see. I can reach Donnie. But yeah, like these, these are really cool to shoot. And they're cool to shoot on their own just because their looks are so unique. Putting them all together, in fact, almost looks kind of messy. But putting them together at the same time, that can be a lot of fun too. But yeah, I love shooting those. I need to get the creature still. And I need to get the Wolfman. And then April, Splinter, and Casey. But I have the first four main turtles. Good, good stuff. Mr. Madsen, love your take on Mikey. And he is the last Ronin. This is true. This is true. 
I can, and that's something, ooh, the last Ronin, too, is one of those lines where I'm like, oh, man, what do I do here? Jericho, see, Matthew, I'm <laughs> ganging up on me about Mikey. Mikey's the man? Turtle? Reptile? Her paint is perfect, and take the armor off, and she's different. So awesome. Really? Oh, that's right, because she uses Pandora's torso, doesn't she? I haven't taken her armor off yet. Ooh, yeah, I forgot all about that. And <laughs> I never got Pandora, and now her prices are insane on the secondary. Harry, Eclipse looks great without her armor also, and frees up her articulation. <laughs> Dang it, guys. I'm going to end up taking off the vest during the live stream, aren't I? <laughs> yep. I mean, Jinx is cool, too, but I know what you were saying there. Spaded one. Mutt is pretty much the only classified with a head sculpt that works for action shots. He might be. Who else? That's something I will say. Had they given the Duke, and maybe Scarlet as well, the retros that are coming out, had they given them relaxed hands and Duke specifically a yelling face, that would be the perfect retro Duke ever. And I would be stoked to have that. But yeah, they need, there are, there is more yelling needed in a lot of these figures. I have all nine of the TMNT monsters. Let's see, the new Leo is vastly superior. I think so. I think so. Just what I've seen of them, the Hunchback Leo is my least favorite of the four. I do dig them all. And I sit back and I go, yeah, but one of my problems is articulation. Does he really need to be articulated? Not so much. He just straight up isn't as much fun for me to mess with as the others. Oddly enough, and this isn't because of my Mikey bias, I like Mikey the most and Donatello second. And Raph, the Frankenstein, I think that's a really good figure. I think they're all good figures, to be perfectly honest. But... Yeah, Mikey takes the cake, and Donnie not long after. Let's see, like <laughs> I got you, I got you. Wreck ship. The figure I don't like to shoot that much is the mole rats. Really, the way they design those backpack hose with hard plastic to connect to the side of his head is just awful. Really, they used hard plastic. I've been hearing people talk about how the wires that go to these things aren't very good. In your experience, are the mole rats the worst, or is it pretty much anybody with one of those wire, except for barbecue? I did have barbecue, and it seemed like it worked, but it also felt like it could get twisted really easily. But so could the old ones, so I don't know what you do there. Ah, I missed the button. Spaded one, the classified line is screaming for yelling head sculpts. They are, they're screaming for extra hands, extra hands, yelling head sculpts. We'd be good to go with classified. Classified would be just the nostalgia factor would make it one of my absolute favorite lines out there. Jericho Savage, this year will be the year of reissues for Mafex. Gambit is back up. There you go, folks. If anybody missed Gambit, this Gambit is the Gambit. I mean, I've got him. He's a great figure. He's so good. Anyone else that tries to make Gambit in the 112 scale really just should stop even trying. So, like, if you dig Gambit and you've got the money and you don't have him, go find him because he's an incredible figure. You would not be disappointed with that Gambit. Guaranteed. And I don't say that about a whole lot. Rex Shiv, yeah, the stoic heads are fine, but having a yelling head or even just a different expression than stoic would be nice. It would be. You know what I want? And I know we all, you guys get to hear me talk about Flint all the time, but on his file card, when they talk about how he goes in and kicks down the door to our cell, and there with that light lopsided grin on his face is Flint saying, come on, boys, we're going home. I need Flint with a lopsided grin. Stoic is fine. Give me that lopsided grin as well. That would make me happy. It kind of reminds me of like I visualized Harrison Ford with the Indiana Jones kind of look where he's just, you know, kind of just upturned a little bit on one side. In fact, I think I probably did that so much. This line here is much deeper than this line. 
No good, Dave. No good. Wreck ship. The mole rat's hose is literally part of the molded backpack piece that is rigid with zero give to it. So I'd prefer the barbecue hose on the mole rats if possible. Wow. So does that, that's got to totally limit then any kind of head movement, doesn't it? I mean, I, I would imagine it does. So suddenly all these action poses that you would try and get just turning them at the neck. Yeah, that sucks. And I like the look of the mole rat, but obviously without extra hands, I didn't go for him. But I thought he looked good. It sucks that he's no more functional than that. A spaded one. Subteam variants are a golden opportunity for all head sculpts. They were almost there with Tiger Force Outback being old. Man, yep, yep, that's true. Ha have you guys seen the leaked pictures? I don't know if they're leaked or, you know, kind of leaked solicitations of the Jada Street Fighter figures that are like the Player 2 variants, where one of them is Chun-Li in her pink outfit, and then she's got, is it one or two? I think it's two heads that would go on the pink outfit and one head for the blue outfit and a bunch of extra hands. So, like, you get the Player 2 variant, and you could also kind of finish off the Player 1 variant. I think that's evil. I also think it's brilliant. <laughs> so it's kind of like... Man, I thought I was going to be happy with just Chun Li, but then the pink variant makes me need to get that other one. So, or make me need to get her so I can put the blue head on the, uh, the Chun Li that I already have. Fortunately, I don't feel like people have been talking about the Daredevil and Hydro Man two pack from Hasbro. And I've seen a lot of comments about why are you putting Daredevil behind like another figure again? When it comes to that, if people don't want Hydro Man, but they really want Daredevil, it kind of feels like manipulation to me when it comes to, like a lot of people would say marketing, no, 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 that's straight up manipulation. You can have Daredevil, but you have to get this figure that you may eventually want to sell down the line. So to me, it's, it's a little slimy, at least with Jada. I really love the figures. So while it's still the same kind of slimy practice, they look so good that I almost don't care. It's almost hypocritical of me to say such things, but the figures are awesome. <clears throat> Wreck ship. It makes it to where they can basically only look straight ahead, and then the hose kind of gets in the way when using the alt zombie energon head. Man, yeah, that sucks. I actually find it hard to believe they did that. I wonder if that was... I mean, sometimes there's just bonehead mistakes that you don't think about as a designer, for sure, no doubt. But I wonder if there was some miscommunication with the factory on that. I hope so. I hope so. It's hard for me to believe that that's something that Lenny would have intentionally done or had someone do. I've seen those Player 2 variants with the alt head for Player 1. Great incentive. Yeah, I totally agree. And they're great figures, so I'm not so bothered by it. Fei Long also comes with grab hands and nunchucks. I want those nunchucks. It's like, sounds like I'm going to be sitting there using those nunchucks. No, 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 no. But those look really good. Yeah, I saw that. Was there another one that they showed or was it just those two so far? Mr. Savage. I passed on that DDHM2 pack being that this year Mafex releases DD. Yeah, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need that DD. Like, truly, I know I've said this before, if I couldn't collect any other line, I would still collect Mafex. So all those figures that are coming out this year that I need, I need. I'm going to have to find a way, but I think it's things are looking up. I think I can do that. The Daredevil from the three-pack is just about perfect, but the other figures aren't really good. <laughs> That's what I saw, I think, displaying model behavior. Dave on there was talking about how Bullseye didn't even come with a gun. And that Electra is not the Electra anybody wants. I love the head sculpts on her, though. I think those are phenomenal. But they need to be in red. So, yeah, I, I can see what you're talking about. And I know that that design for Bullseye exists. But come on, man. Black, black. That blue shirted look. Yeah, you're not kidding. Like, if I were into Marvel Legends, I probably would have passed on that three-pack just because those other two figures just weren't what I wanted. 
Redshift. Oh, don't get me started on that Hydro Man in DD2 pack. I want that DD, but I think the cell shading looks terrible and don't need Hydro Man. You know, I don't think the cell shading looks that great, but I do think it looks better than a lot of the cell shading they've been doing recently. So I have to give that to him. He also comes with two sets of extra hands. He comes with a yelling head. He comes with what I think. I think at least I've seen people say this. I haven't looked at the pictures that closely, but like bendy wire in between the Billy Club or whatever. So I think the accessories, they nailed it. But he's still got that ab crunch. Makes me sad. So I think, honestly, I think they did a better job on that Daredevil than a lot of them. Fingers crossed they do a retro card version of that DD figure soon. He's basically a perfect budget DD figure. That's that's what I'm saying. And truly, like, I wish Marvel Legends, because they have an opportunity to be better than Mafex figures. But they can't because they don't do the ball jointed waist. And then there's other things that they can't really like. They're not going to be able to compete with Mafex on accessories because they have to keep keep to a certain price point. But man, if they just made that one adjustment, because the figures this year they do at least from promo shots, they are looking a little bit better than a lot of the other figures than that they had specifically last year. So I just wish they would have made that adjustment. Wreck ship, the extra hands and head is how they entice you to pick it up. That's how that's how Mc, ugh, Mc what, huh? That's how Mafex entices me to pick up a bunch of stuff. That plus the extremely awesome articulation. And since I was just talking about Jada, by the way, there were some other figures I grabbed over here. I love taking pictures of Ryu here. It's actually, there's a picture I took last year where it was towards the end of the year, obviously, where I had like a red orange moon in the sky and I had him jumping up like he's going to go after Fei Long and Chun Li's in the extreme foreground. Ooh, he's just a lot of fun to photograph. And this was my number one figure under 50 bucks of last year. I think this evil Ryu's great. And obviously what helps him out is the fact that he's wearing a much darker gi. Because sometimes it's difficult to light a figure with your, you know, the lighting you've got set up when they're wearing white. It just makes it a little tougher because you want to highlight the colorful parts, but you don't want to hit them so hard that you blow out the effect with the white that's going on there, or blow out the white so much. But yeah, I love this Ryu. I think that one's pretty impressive. And then when it comes to shooting, I have to find a way to shoot this guy a whole lot more because he just cracks me up. Like He's ridiculously good. And he is why, we were talking a few live streams ago, he is why I think I kind of want Jada to end up with a Looney Tunes license. Like those proportions are perfect for Looney Tunes. Hanna-Barbera is fine. I never liked Hanna-Barbera like I did Looney Tunes. But I would be down for them getting that license as well. I truly, Jada is one of those companies that I just want to get all the things when it comes to Jada. They do great work. I just want them to keep going. And with mascots like this, just wacky enough that I can add this to co the collection and just have a blast with. So, yeah, he's a lot of fun to shoot as well. I just need to be able to shoot him more. Spaded one. Dude, the Jada SF line is amazing. They post so well, and any two of them together automatically tells a story. That is true. That is so true. And all you have to do, like if you want to really get crazy, you just get online and you find like a picture of any of the Jada people fighting each other and done. You got it. You're set. You're like, oh, that's what I'm going to do now to set up the shot. I love those figures. By the way, by the way, now I know I've talked about this some, at least I put it in the last newsletter, but I did want to say that I'm always going to leave the stuff for toy photography as free. Like that's important to me that everybody have access to that. But I also recently have been really trying to rack my brain on what I can do for the paying Patreon members, just because you guys all know, if you've been following me for a while, you can get anything I post on Patreon for free. It's yours. 
you want it, go get it if you think it'll help you, right? But there are some people that have paid to be on there as well. And so I feel like I need to do something extra for them. So something I'm going to do, I'm going to start a new line tomorrow. I wasn't going to get into this line, but I was at the store and I saw this figure. And now I have to get into the line like that. It's that simple. So what I'm going to post on Patreon for those subscribers, for the paying subscribers there, patrons, I suppose they say, is I'm going to do an unboxing. And I might talk a little bit about why I dig the photography aspect of them and everything, but it's not like I'm going to sit there and go into an in-depth review. I'm just going to have a little more fun with video when it comes to Patreon, I think, for those subscribers, just so they can get a little extra something. So those of you that are in here, that are watching, that are doing that, first, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're going to start getting a oh, few extra things. It's just not going to be toy photography related because I want to make sure all that stuff stays free for everybody. Spaded one, I've been using a Legends Human Torch as a flame body effect for the Street Fighter figures. It even poses exactly like the sprite. Huh, I would not have thought of that. That's really cool. Man, now I have to I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to think about things. All right. Just because you guys keep bringing it up, let's see if I can remember. Well, two of you brought it up. All right. Ah, it's on the side. That's right. It's been a while. I think I took off. See if I can do this. This is one thing that bugs me about Action Force is the tolerances still feel like they need to be worked out a little bit because it still is tough to pop things off, like specifically the hands. Like this Warpath, I still have to use the hairdryer to change out the hands. Okay, or this Warpath Eclipse. I keep, call, I keep calling her Warpath like, bam, zowie! Sorry, that might have been a little loud. Ah, get on there. There we go. Oh man, you're not kidding. That is a totally different look. How have I how did I not do that before? Let's uh call this up a little bit so I can see what you're seeing. Yeah, that is cool. She looks good. She she looks like one of those people you just don't mess with. Speaking of not messing with Eclipse. This has been one of my, this has been, I think we're tied, to be perfectly honest at this point. She has been my favorite Valiverse figure to shoot, just because of the colors and how much personality you can give her. That head sculpt is really good. She's just, she's just a lot of fun. She's very cool. And I love the fact that even though he doesn't have the butterfly joints on there, you can still get the female body. And I know I showed you this with Kill Switch. But you can still get the female body figures to do this, where you've got the hand holding underneath here perfectly, so it looks like she's actually holding the gun properly. I really dig that. And Eclipse is the first figure I learned how to do that on. In fact, most of the early photos of her, I had her holding the pistol, just like I have Kill Switch doing. And I need to make adjustments here. Kill Switch is obviously a sniper. I still haven't put the big sniper rifle that came in the gear pack in her hands yet. So, yeah, there's that. All right, pushing to buttons. Jericho, Jaded Toys is nice for the price point, but their paint QC is not that great. I haven't had any problems on their paint QC yet. Uh, the one problem I've had, let's see, there were two problems I have had. One is I got Fei Long in the first batch of Fei Long releases, so his diaphragm joint doesn't work very well. So I might end up having to go out and I might decide I'd need a new Fei Long, basically. That might happen. Or, or with a Player 2 one, maybe I can just swap out the pants a little bit and not have to buy a new Fei Long. We shall see. Because I'm assuming since they're making hands that work for both, the skin color is going to work for both. So it should be that I could pop off his torso and pop it on the other pants or whatever. Pop off the torso from the second player and put it on the first player. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do now that I'm just kind of thinking out loud. That'll work. The other problem I had, number two, 
is Chun Li, her stoic head, sits really loose on the peg. That I'm okay with because I can fix it with putty. The yelling head, that thing's pretty awesome. I did see Hatter got the Mega Man figures, and it was Iceman and Fireman were having paint problems, though. So it's something I'll be watching out for. Spaded one. That figure looks like evil Lara Croft. <laughs> she kind of does. I mean, evil is a lot more fun than good, let's be honest. Although I'll take Optimus Prime over Megatron any day. By the way, guys, I'm working on a theory. And so if any of you are collecting Hasbro Transformers figures, let me know what you think of the quality of them. And I don't have any preconceived notions. I'm not sitting here ready to agree, disagree, anything like that. My theory is that we keep seeing that Hasbro is constantly saying, keep seeing constantly, anyway, words. They're saying a lot that we really want to focus on our core brands. And even though G.I. Joe hasn't been brought up in any of those conversations, their G.I. Joe figures are clearly getting a lot of love. And I feel like maybe the Black Series and the Legends figures aren't getting quite as much love. Granted, there's a licensing issue there and everything else. So I could see that that could be the reason, bar none, absolutely. That's the only reason there is. It's just licensing. But if G.I. Joe's getting this much love, and if Transformers, you guys think, are getting a lot of love, then I have to think that part of it is Hasbro's just saying, you know what, we're going all in on our stuff. Because their G.I. Joe stuff is fantastic. Anyway, that's just a working theory. Curious what everybody else thinks. Harry, she looks ready to kick Predator ass. I need a jungle hunter Predator. Good Lord. Yeah, you're not kidding, though. She looks awesome. And I was actually going to watch. I, I was getting ready to watch RoboCop the other day, guys, by the way, since people have busted me for not seeing that. Or Predator. I was actually looking them both up. And something called me away, and I wasn't able to do it. But I do plan on watching both of those. Original Eclipse was my favorite of the female wave. Warpath may be my favorite of the line so far. Ooh, I do enjoy, what's the weapon called? Like, it looks like a mini scythe, basically. I don't know what it's called. But I took a shot where she's basically jumping at the camera, and she's got her knife in one hand and that little mini scythe-looking thing in the other. And she's got the yelling head on, jumping towards it. It was the one, like, I enjoyed the shot, but I don't have a macro lens. And if I'd had a macro lens, I think I could have made that shot look better. So that was, that's the one time I thought, oh, man, I really wish I had a ma macro lens for this one. Harry, Pandora is number one. You would say, you're saying that because you heard me say that I didn't get Pandora, aren't you? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> I still. I'm probably gonna get a gear pack. Hope maybe I get a bloody variant. Then see if I can trade the bloody variant for maybe a regular Pandora. I don't know. We'll see. Mister Matson, that was the first shots I did with her spirit and warpath fighting predator. Oh, 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 oh man, that would. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and see if I can find those. Harry. Yep. <laughs> You guys, this is, this is what I like to see. Everybody's got great minds in these chats because we're all brilliant, except maybe your host. Jericho Savage, I saw them at a toy shop, and their Chun-Li had bad paint QC. Also, I had to go through like eight Mega Mans just to find one with good paint. Oh, that sucks. I don't want to hear that because I never see like the target around me. There's two targets around me, and neither one has a really good collector section. So I never see, in fact, I'm not sure. I think I've seen two Street Fighter figures between the two targets around me, and they were both Fei Longs. So I've never seen anything else Jada, and I almost never see anything TMNT either. So, yeah, I don't like that because I would generally pre-order Mega Man. Oh, boy. Yeah, definitely don't like hearing that, especially when I saw Hatter's video too. See, because food is dumb. <laughs> I think you meant because good is dumb, but I got you. Yep, there we go. 
evil will always win because good is dumb. Was that the one? I can't remember. I think it was evil will always win, but I'm not sure. I honestly don't have much hope for Black Series, but Classified is getting way too much praise at the moment to back out now. That's true. That's true. I'm really hoping that if they start giving extra hands and heads and just make that the thing, we're good. Like Classified kills it. See, we did a movie discussion on Predator a week before Carl Weathers passed. We are doing the live tonight. Oh, man. Yeah, that was that one hurt. That one hurt because I don't know about you guys. Every time I saw Carl Weathers, first off, I had no idea he was 76. Now, that makes total sense when you think about the movies he was in way back when. But he didn't look 76 at all. And he always looked like a big, healthy, robust dude. Like, I was absolutely shocked. And I think a lot of people were to hear that he died. But yeah, man, that was that was rough. That was rough to hear that. <clears throat> Wreck ship. I think Hasbro higher ups hate the fact that classified series is far and away the best brand they have at the moment without a specific media attached to it, and they don't know what to do with it. <laughs> well, I think if their numbers are showing that it's far and away the best. I think anybody knows that what you do with it is you pour more money into it, you make them ridiculously awesome so no one can say no. I think that's that's basically the move. But, yeah, I know that a lot of companies these days, they seem to be like, whoa, there's no media attached. I don't think it's a good idea. And I'll be honest, I didn't think Classified would go this long because there's no media attached. I'll also be honest in that. We don't know the numbers. I would like to see the numbers on what's crushing it still. Is Marvel Legends still doing just sweet because everybody knows Marvel and maybe G.I. Joe isn't doing as well? Because to be honest, I rarely see it on the pegs except when I go to Target and there's all the exclusives just sitting there peg warming. I've seen some, but for the most part, I don't see that many. That would be interesting, though. I would like to, if classified is the line that's killing it, I think that Hasbro needs to pour more money into it and make it bigger quantity, show their sales figures to Target and Walmart, and say, guys, seriously, we think we've got a hit on our hands. But they're the ones with the MBAs. Ah, so many buttons. Friction. Black Series, while it might have a few sparks of life, definitely needs something to get the juices flowing again. Marvel Legends just kind of seems to not know what to do without some MCU properties. And that's something else I wonder. I mean, Disney stuff has not been universally loved like it was before and during Endgame, and even to some extent, No Way Home. So I wonder if... I mean, I know that those things not being as people not digging those as much. I know that has to affect the bottom line with both Star Wars and Marvel. So because of that, I wonder if they're thinking, you know what, these aren't going to sell no matter what we do. So maybe we don't dump money into these. Maybe we just see if we can get by with them. But I don't know. Like when you're doing that, I feel like it makes Disney and Hasbro look bad when you're just pushing out figures just to push out figures. You know what I mean? But who knows? That's that's branding me talking. <clears throat> Spaded one. Classified is the only thing Hasbro has I really care about. They don't put out the legends I want to buy, and I've never been a big Star Wars guy. Classified is just a great toy line for the price. And I agree. I think that at the $25 price point, you've got... What was I? I was thinking of a few lines... Obviously, Street Fighter, you've got basically anything Jada does around 25 bucks, anything that Classified does around 25 bucks. Because even though personally I think they should all have extra hands, they still come with tons of stuff. So I can't sit there and objectively say that Jada is better than Classified or vice versa, even though I do think Jada right now is better than Classified. On the other hand, Classified has a whole lot more figures. Let's see what happens when Jada's figures get that deep. But then there's Valiverse, 
which is in the 20 to $30 range at this point. And value wise, ooh, I don't know. I feel like you get a lot with Action Force. You get a lot with Action Force. And for me, the only thing it's missing is the nostalgia because everything else going for it, for the most part, aside from, you know, being kind of drab colors, which is more realistic, which is what the line caters to. And I know what you guys are saying when you say they look kind of boring. I totally get it. But aside from that, really, they've kind of got classified beat unless they're not working on their tolerances. At that point, I'm like, oh, come on, guys. Come on. Let's get those tolerances up there. I don't think McFarlane really is working in the $25 scale. I don't think as far as value, it's very good. Hasbro has my, ugh, Micronauts mask they could do so much with. There was a, they filed a trademark or they reacquired perhaps, or maybe they just are keeping it up to date for, I think, an animated mask series. Now, just because they filed the trademark doesn't mean they're going to do anything with it, but they obviously think it's worth holding on to. What they might have been doing is saying, Ramen Toys is kind of making mask stuff, so let's make sure we hold on to this trademark. But I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know much about Micronauts. I vaguely know much about Mask. <clears throat> Marvel Legends really needs Evergreen Heroes always available in stores. Captain America, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, etc. are never easy to find, especially in classic costumes. It's all variants. This is true. And I do wonder, I don't know enough. I wish I saw their numbers, you know? I do wonder if just putting the names on certain figures does enough or if they really need to be recognizable as the character like the thor that came out a lot of people really liked that was the herald thor i never saw that version of thor and aside from long hair and holding the hammer it didn't look that much like thor to me so i wonder if for people that don't know that version of thor if putting the name thor on it made them buy it I'm just not sure. I wish I knew. And Iron Man, he almost always has the red and gold, so you really can't go wrong. But you're right. They need to keep a lot of those figures on shelves. It's why I'm so geeked that Mafex is doing a lot of the reissues. Wreck Ship. I was talking to another collector, and we were both of the opinion that it would do both Black Series and Marvel Legends a favor to wait to see if certain new media actually is a hit with enough fans before making it. There is definitely merit to that, but here's where things get tricky. When it comes to the marketing side of things, you want to strike while the iron's hot. So like <laughs> the fact that say that they were so secretive about Grogu when the Mandalorian first came out, that hurt them big time because they didn't have Grogu ready to go for episode one. So there are those things that you have to think about when it comes to the marketing. I think, I don't know. I don't know how the contracts work or anything for Hasbro and Disney. But to be perfectly honest, I think Hasbro should be sitting there saying, guys, look, you need to get less of a licensing fee because you're not producing stuff that people always dig, which means they're not buying the stuff that you're mandating that we make. So either you let us make the figures we want to make or you really up your game in the media production because or or you just allow us to go with a far lower rates for the license i don't know it's it's tough man it's tough wreck ship i think that would help with a lot of peg rot we've seen over the past year or so i think some of the peg rot does have to do with overproduction but i don't know like it's it sounds like a broken record but there's so many people saying things online that just seem like certainty and they say it like it's certainty but i've never seen proof for any of it my gut is it's probably true it makes sense that it's true that a lot of people came in to start collecting during covid because they didn't have anything else to do and once they were able to get back to their regular life, they kind of stopped collecting. So my gut says, yes, absolutely, that is likely. But I haven't seen proof of it. And that's where things get tricky. I was, this is going to sound crazy coming from this, but 
I was big into journalism like in high school, which I know high school, who cares? But I did get a scholarship at college based on journalism. It was a community college, fair point, right? But it is something that I'm always careful about what I say in those regards because I just don't have the facts. Like when people sit there and they talk about, oh, that's price too high or why can't they sell this at retail? I don't know. There might be a reason because in my head, Hasbro wants everything they make in Target and Walmart. They don't want to have to go Hasbro Pulse. Yes, they cut out the middleman by going Hasbro Pulse, but imagine how many more eyeballs they would get on the product if it was all over Target and Walmart. They would get so many more eyeballs on that stuff. I think that there's, I mean, it looks to me like they can't sell this stuff in stores because stores don't want it because it must just not be guaranteed sellers anymore. But yeah, those are those are things I have to be careful about saying because I don't have the facts. It's hard as a new collector to get excited about Gray Hulk in a suit when I've never seen Green Hulk in purple pants on any retail shelf in the last 10 years. You know what? That's a great point. I think I saw when they did, uh, I think, was this the first... No, it wasn't. They did uh, the Green Hulk with the purple pants in the first appearance Wolverine pack. And I think I only saw that once in store. And that was, what would that have been? 2019. So like five years ago. Yeah, you're not kidding. It's, it's been a while. You're right. They need to keep these figures on the shelf. But then other people will whine about it. But I think what's going to end up happening is if collectors really are getting out of it and they're still trying to draw more people in, I think we're going to start seeing less C and D list characters from Marvel, from Marvel Legends, because they won't sell as well. And if they want to keep their stuff in Target and Walmart, they need to produce characters that they know are going to sell. And that ain't happening with Rock Python. <clears throat> Wreck ship. Yeah. I get the striking while it's hot argument, but if the property is just over and done with in six months, then I don't know that it should be prioritized. There is a lot of that. I know that a lot of times when they have like, when they're getting early drafts of something, you know, so many times the Legends team has had to go back and redo figures that they did before because they got early test screenshots and stuff like that. That stuff's a problem, I think. Like the gray Avengers suits. I saw those and just thought, huh? That's a little weird. But yeah, I mean, there's an argument to be made on both sides. From a business perspective, if that stuff is on the shelf at the same time as the current entertainment is coming out, then it's just going to sell more, specifically, or especially if the entertainment is good. But since everything's kind of just thrown off right now, Things are constantly getting pushed back. The Black Widow movie shows up. That wave shows up months before the movie actually gets released. And oddly enough, peg warms. I mean, they got to get to a point like they did way back when where, okay, we're going to release this. Like, say, season one of Masters would start. Here's season one. Here's the first wave of figures. And I can't. It feels like they did that way more back when we were kids. Like they're, they were just on top of it a lot more. And I know it's tougher with leaks online and all that stuff now, but it just seems like people aren't talking to each other. Harry, Hasbro puts out too much for the collect or the collectors don't want not enough of the stuff collectors want. I do agree with that. But some of that, if we're talking specifically of Marvel Legends and Star Wars Black Series, some of that is mandated by Disney, at least from what I understand, from what I hear. Again, that's me saying things that sounds absolutely true. But I think considering the looks on a lot of people's faces when they're presenting this stuff that they know isn't going to do well, I have to think Disney does actually mandate a lot of that stuff. So I don't fully put the blame on Hasbro. Some of the blame has to go to Disney. I'm sure some of it has to go to Hasbro. but. Yeah, man, they, it would be best if they were able to do that. But again, that's Hasbro having to say to Disney, here's the deal, guys. Either we pay less in licensing or you let us do the figures that we want to do that we know will sell. 
And if Hasbro's not going to do that or Disney's not going to agree to it, you're still going to end up with Black Series and Marvel Legends the way they are. <clears throat> the problem is Walmart and Target distribution is not great either. Some store locations are on Oasis and others are a desert. That's true. Or are an Oasis. That's very true. My stuff, uh, my stores don't get a whole lot in, whereas it sounds like everybody on the West Coast totally gets everything. Harry, they put out Classic Hulk on the Classic Marvel Legends last year. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I don't think I ever, I don't think I ever saw any of those in stores. But that was the one with Toad, oh, yeah, the first wave, right? So it was Toad, Captain America, Iron Man, and Hulk. And I did think that Hulk looked good, but he didn't have a ball jointed waist, so he was out. <laughs> I sound like a broken record on such things. Do I have any other figures here? that are, let's see, oh, I got one. Hang on, reaching, reaching. Zog, I haven't shot him as much as I'd like to shoot him. I really need to start shooting these things a little more, but one thing I've been doing with my photos is creating the Toy Picks collection page. So I've been trying to knock out every figure I've got. And once I'm settled in with that, then I start having a little more fun with just going nuts with pictures. But this Zog is amazing. His only problem, truly only problem, is that these aren't vertical hinges. So he can't, like, you know, hold a gun like he's supposed to hold the gun. But, yeah, man, if you guys don't have this Zog and you like dinosaurs and you like turtles, try to get him because you can still pre-order him. He's not outrageously expensive anywhere yet. And he's just a really good figure. But, you know, that's that's one person's opinion. Whew. Spaded one. Man, I got to get Zog. You can. You can. He isn't. He's not like on the secondary crazy pricing or anything like that yet. Zog is still available. So go get you some Zog. He's awesome. He's definitely a fave when it comes to the Turtles. Big fan. Big fan. So, any other uh, any other figures you guys have? I know we we've, we've derailed, but that happens in live streams. That's one thing I've learned, and that's one thing I am totally cool with. So, are there any other figures you guys can think of that you really love just sitting down and shooting? Anything at all, and maybe some other vehicles. I know we've talked about the boat, we've talked about the Brad's car, and we've talked about the Hiss tank. So, before I close this out, let's get a few more in. Spaded one. The NECA d, d line doesn't get enough love. Man, it would for me if I were... I'll tell you what. Here's the deal. If Toy Picks gets crazy this year, and I'm working toward Toy Picks getting crazy this year, I will end up with those d, &D figures. Those things are amazing. I looked... What's the... What's the name? Is Steelheart or Strongheart? Something like that. I saw him, and I was blown away, and then I opened Zarek, and I was blown away, and next to them, because remember, NECA goes to Meyer, so I can't count on Target having a lot of NECA stuff that I dig, but Meyer tends to actually have some NECA stuff I like, so I look to the side, and there's Baby Sinclair and Earl Sinclair, and then all the gargoyles when I see them, like, NECA is one of those lines that I feel like we do get our money worth. I just, uh, I need to expand a little bit before I can get into that. We all know I love my focus, but all I need to do is just put in some shelves and I can still stay focused, right? Stay focused. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's the ticket. <laughs> Spaded one. I'm not even a D&D &D guy and that line is one of my faves. That's what I'm saying, man. I don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons. I vaguely remember the designs when everybody's so stoked about the cartoon designs and the figures. I vaguely remember those. Like, and I never played D&D or anything like that. I just think they look cool. I think the Ram Cycle is a decent option, either Tiger Force or regular version. I love, you know what really made me so I dig the Ram? And I sold Breaker way back when because not only didn't he have extra hands, which at the time didn't bug, bug me so much in all fairness, but he just didn't seem like Breaker to me. 
So I sold him, but I kept the Ram and then I got rock and roll. And suddenly it's like rock and roll on his own is awesome. The Ram on its own is awesome. Rock and roll on the Ram. Speaking of like figures or whatever that goes together. Bah! Anybody with rock and roll and a Ram, that's good times. I don't have the Tiger Force version though. Spaded one. Check out the upcoming Elkhorn's accessories. He's loaded. I saw that. I haven't seen Elkhorn in person yet, but I saw all the stuff he came with. Oh, yeah. I think as Toy Picks grows, the next NECA line that I would get into beyond Turtles would be would be D and D because I like Grim Sword. I like uh, oh crap. What's the one that everybody loves with a blue helmet? Dan Larson specifically, I think. War Duke. Yeah. I think Grimsword is just creepy cool. I think War Duke looks awesome. I think Zarak is just <laughs> like he has that that vibe to him. And then that strong heart or steel heart or whatever. He just looks cool. And yeah, Melkorn, he's just gonna add to it. And I love when they all come with all those accessories. So many dio options too. I've been thinking that we need to have like a prop night where we talk a lot about props we can use in photography. I missed out on breaker and the Ram cycle really bummed, man. I'm wondering, I haven't looked those up in a while. I wonder if you can still get them fairly cheaply. I'm not sure. Check eBay, like check eBay. It might not be too bad and you might be able to just get one or the other warriors, warriors, warriors. I probably, let's see. All right, let's see. Warriors, War Duke. That's right. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. I thought that's what it was, but it was tough for me. The brain, it stopped working. Yeah, I get the main reaction to Classified Breaker. With literally nothing except his helmet, he's kind of a dull figure. Good thing I have plenty of extra weapons. That's true. Breaker was that guy that it would have been perfect for him to come with like a extra head with a bubble gum or something, kind of like Legends did with Jubilee. <clears throat> There's a model of an awesome motorcycle called Gigantic Arms Rapid Raider for 40 bucks. All right, all right, we're going to go find that, aren't we? We're going to need to go find that. Let's see what else you got, Harry? Let's see, ooh, works with 112. All right, let's go find that real quick. What do we got here? Gigantic Arms Rapid Raider. Show me new window. This is me uh, concentrating really hard to type. So I'm not saying much here. All right. Rapid Raider. Oh, all right. Hang on. Let me uh, bring that up. Let me get us some better pictures. It's Kotobikiya. Is that right? Oh my God. Don't worry, don't worry. I won't leave you guys in the dark. Hang on. Make sure I get. Uh... Oh, this thing is sweet. All right, here we go. Push the buttons, share the screen. Look at that thing. Oh, that is. That is cool. Hold on before I forty bucks. This this has to be the one. That thing is sweet. That looks like something you could use with like you could use that with Street Fighter figures and it would look fine. <laughs> Maybe not have them ride it like that. That'd probably get pretty hot. Oh, Harry, great call, man. This thing looks awesome. Whoo. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I'm digging that for sure. Wreck ship. I'm hoping that the upcoming vamp vehicle will be as awesome as Len Lenny made it out to be. It looks good in pictures. I mean, it looks great in pictures. So... 
hopefully, hopefully it is pretty awesome. I didn't order one, but I might rectify that down the line. Right now, my what I really need to correct is probably needing to see if I can find that Dragonfly at a reasonable price when it's released. But it was my own fault for missing out. So I'm not like all your people say, oh, now we want a reasonable price. I intentionally skipped it because I didn't think it looked that good. Had I had the Hiss tank in hand when it went up, I would have ordered it day one because the Hiss tank I thought was just that cool. Having the same people behind the Dragonfly. Yeah, and it's not that I didn't think it looked good. It just didn't look... It looked like a generic helicopter. Looked like a great generic helicopter, but it looked like a generic helicopter to me. Whereas the Hiss tank, that looked like a GI Joe vehicle, kind of like the Vamp. So I'm kind of kicking myself for missing that too. <clears throat> Harry, I saw a Mafex Nightwing on it, and it fits great. Oh, I didn't think of that. That would be awesome. Ooh. Guys, yeah, this might be something to grab. It's hard to believe it's only 40 bucks. I mean, part of that, that's something that's something else I wonder about some. Part of the reason I'm sure the cost is as low as it is is because they don't need machines or people to put it together and put it in a box. I sometimes wonder if they would do that again with G.I. Joe vehicles like they used to. And be like, okay, okay, guys, here's how we're going to save you. Here's how we're going to save you some cost. And then it wouldn't take as much take up as much room on the shelves either. Is you're gonna put it together yourself, but then it'll be in a smaller box. We can sell more of them, we can sell them more because they're cheaper, more people will buy, and maybe quantity trumps the inflated prices. I don't know, but that's a thought I've had. Is it would be kind of cool if G.I. Joe went back to us having to put our own vehicles together. Just because I think that'd save them. That make it so they could sell more units, and that make it so we could buy it for less money. It's a again, it's a win win. It's a I love those 50 50 deals. Anyway, guys, all right, that's what I've got for this one. So hey, thanks for stopping by, sharing some of your favorite figures to shoot. I love getting these discussions in. So until next time, have fun, and happy snapping. Now I'm gonna hit end stream. And we're going to have some kind of weird face go on. We'll see if I can come up with something original this time. Here we go.